Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionals one more time continuing our discussion about the great playlist on pulmonology. In the previous video, we have talked about tissue hypoxia. Today, we will discuss pneumothorax. Pneumo means air and thorax means chest. What do you mean by chest? I mean between the two layers of the pleura. The visceral pleura, which covers the lung, and the parietal pleura, which aligns the chest wall. With that being said, now let's get started. By the way, the videos on my YouTube are not the entire thing. I still have premium videos available at patreon.com slash medicosis and then click on videos. In the second video in this playlist, which was a clinically oriented anatomy of the thorax, we have talked about the mediastinum and we've discussed the pneumomediastinum. Pneumomediastinum is when you have air in the mediastinum and this air in the mediastinum can go to here between the two pleural layers. So pneumomediastinum can lead to pneumothorax. And by the same token, the opposite can also happen. You can start with pneumothorax leading to pneumomediastinum, and we have talked about this before. If you are interested in the causes of widened mediastinum, they are here. This is not related to this video, but this was discussed again in my second video in this playlist. Pneumothorax. Pneumothorax has two main types, closed or internal pneumothorax. You cannot see it from outside, so you, know, you don't see any cut in the chest wall. Open or external pneumothorax, that's when someone stabs me with a knife. A cut can be seen from outside. Okay, let's talk about closed pneumothorax. It's like spontaneous pneumothorax. What do you mean? I mean rupture of some blebs or bulla in a tall, thin individual. So let's hear a very tall individual. And here's the lung and some bulla like this in the lung. And they rupture into the pleural cavity. This is spontaneous pneumothorax. It's, it's okay. It's not an emergency diaphragm is not pushed down this is different from tension pneumothorax also the mediastinum in cases of spontaneous pneumothorax is not pushed to the opposite side this is not fatal why not because the pressure in the pleura does not rise very much instead of negative it's now atmospheric what do you mean by atmospheric i mean zero what do you mean by zero i mean it's the same as the atmosphere we call it just for reference zero but it's not zero it's 760 millimeters of mercury if you remember your physics you still have the other normal lung yes so it's not fatal because you can live with one lung easily you can live with one lung you can live with one kidney you can reproduce with one testes it's it's possible you have a very good margin of safety so to speak to use an economically sophisticated term open or external pneumothorax there is a cut and the cut can be seen from the outside if it's unilateral, it's not fatal. Why not? You still have the other lung, which is normal. But of course, from the stab wound, you can die from hemorrhagic shock or hypovolemic shock. And this is not the lung's fault, but here we're talking about the lung. Bilateral open pneumothorax is fatal. Yes, indeed. And sometimes there is a valve-like mechanism. What's the purpose of the valve in your tire? It's to let air into the tire, but not let air outside of the tire. Same thing can happen in your pleural cavity. Air is coming in through the stab wound and then a valve is going to form here, allowing air to come in but not to exit. Give it some time and the pressure inside the pleura is not only going to be atmospheric or zero, it's going to be positive or more than the atmospheric. This is bad news because it's going to push on this lung and it's going to push on the mediastinum, push it to the opposite side and it's going to push on the diaphragm to the lower, to like depress the diaphragm going down. This is bad news if it pushes on the mediastinum and it's going to push on the normal lung. Oh my goodness. And even the normal lung will collapse. This is called compression atelectasis. Atelectasis means collapse because ectasia means dilation. Tele means distance. So distant dilation. And A means no. There is no dilation in your lung. You collapse. Tension pneumothorax is a freaking emergency. How to manage tension pneumothorax? Number one, needle decompression or needle thoracentesis. And two is thoracostomy tube. Okay, needle decompression as you see in the movies. You bring the needle, man, and you puncture this chest in order to deflate it. Where to put the needle? Put it mid-clavicular line. So if this is the clavicle, the mid-clavicular line. And between the second and the third rib. So it should be here. Like this. This is how you deflate the lung and save the patient's life with tension pneumothorax. Or you can use thoracostomy tube and connect it to underwater seal. Why underwater seal? To force the air this way, honey. It's called physics. 
when you use the chest tube you put it in the fifth intercostal space anterior axillary line so it's going to be here and let's count uh fifth intercostal so between the fifth and the sixth rib so one two three four five between five and six and here you insert the needle and then the tube okay let's get to the crux of the matter not to be confused with the crux of the diaphragm and not to be confused with the crux of your penis that's an anatomy joke hehe <laughs> not funny what's the difference between spontaneous and teen tension epidemiology or risk factor spontaneous happens in tall thin young men so while you can join the the nba um you can also get spontaneous pneumothorax because there are no solutions in life only trade-offs as dr thomas Sowell said okay rupture of pleural blebs smoking uh, uh, uh. blame yourself don't blame your mommy and daddy for your genes ah uh, sometimes it's your fault sometimes or family history. If, again, you have family history of spontaneous pneumothorax, you're more likely to have spontaneous pneumothorax. Okay, let's talk about causes. Causes of spontaneous pneumothorax include COPD, and by far this is the most common cause, paraseptal emphysema, cystic fibrosis, Marfan syndrome, because Marfan patients are very tall, and homocystinuria. And both Marfan syndrome and homocystinuria will have lens dislocation in the eye. In Marfan syndrome, look at the F. Look at the F. The lens dislocation is upwards and outwards. But in cystinuria, here is the kidney, and it looks like this, the ureter. The ureter is downwards and inwards. This is how we differentiate between the lens dislocation in Marfan and homocystinuria. This is not my mnemonic. I got this from Dr. John Baroon at baroonrocks.com. What are the causes of tension pneumothorax? Trauma, baby. When someone stabs me with a knife, even though I'm innocent. Rupture of tension pneumatocele or pneumatocyst. This is a cyst in the lung and it's caused by staph aureus pneumonia. Symptoms of spontaneous dyspnea and pleuritic chest pain. Sudden onset. Here, same thing. Sudden onset dyspnea and pleuritic chest pain. What do you mean by pleuritic? I mean related to the pleura or to the lung. Like what do you mean? Explain more. I mean the pain increases when I breathe in. <gasps> it hurts. It hurts. And then when I breathe out, uh, it's not hurting. And then when I stop breathing, there is no pain whatsoever. Then I breathe in. <gasps> it hurts. It hurts. Okay. So this is a pleuritic chest pain. Okay. Let's talk about the diaphragm. In spontaneous, the diaphragm is up. Tension pneumothorax, the diaphragm is down. Why down? Because something, the positive pressure is pushing the diaphragm down. Jugular vein, normal or slightly distended. In tension pneumothorax, you have jugular venous distension, or you can call it increased central venous pressure. Ankle edema, nope. But with tension, there is ankle edema. Because when the pleural pressure becomes positive, you have lost the suction force that sucks blood upwards through your vein, and now the blood is going to accumulate in your veins of the leg. You'll end up with ankle edema. Sorry about your toes. Tracheal shift. Spontaneous towards the affected side. Okay, so in spontaneous, the, there is mediastinal shift towards the abnormal side, and the diaphragm is going upwards. But in tension pneumothorax, it's going away from the affected side, and the diaphragm is going downwards. Good. Percussion. Hyperresonant and hyperresonant. Some people call it tympanetic. I prefer hyperresonant. Normally, your chest should be resonant. In spontaneous or tension, it's hyperresonant. Auscultation. Diminished or absent breath sounds. Why? Because now here is the lung. And here is the pleura. Normally, the pressure in the pleura is negative, baby. Okay. And I'm putting the stethoscope on the chest in order to auscultate the lung. But now something is obscuring and interfering with my listening, called the pleura that's now having air. It's having more pressure than it should. This is gonna diminish the respiratory lung sound. Or it could be absent on the affected side. Here in tension pneumothorax, it's diminished or absent on both sides. Because remember, this abnormal lung or abnormal side is gonna push the mediastinum, leading to compression atelectasis on the other side. You have a very small lung on the other side. And of course, if you have a very small lung, it's going to diminish the breath sound. It's called common sense. Something many professors don't have because professors have to be sophisticated. Oh, it's common sense. It's for the normal man. It's for the layman man. I'm sophisticated. I'm with PhD. Yes, in D-U-M-B. Okay, next. 
pleural pressure. In spontaneous pneumothorax, it's atmospheric, which means zero. But in tension pneumothorax, it's positive, and it even increases with every cycle of breathing. When you breathe in, you're increasing the pressure because there is a veil. Breathe in, it's like when you're pumping air into your tire. With every cycle, with every push, you're increasing the pressure in this lung, and this is bad news. Atelectasis. Yes, in spontaneous, and it's unilateral. Why? Due to loss of negative intrapleural pressure. Atelectasis due to collapse. But the other side has atelectasis. It's bilateral due to the positive intrapleural pressure. And this is a compression atelectasis, not to be confused with atelectasis caused by collapse. Severity. Spontaneous is not an emergency. Tension is a freaking emergency. You should do needle thoracotomy or a chest tube, also known as thoracotomy tube. I'm sorry, thoracostomy tube, to be like sophisticated. Chest x-ray. In spontaneous, you will see white visceral pleural line. Normally on x-ray, you should not see the pleura. But now the two layers are separating because there is air in between due to ruptured pleural blebs. You'll see white visceral pleural line normally you shouldn't and this is called the pleural edge which normally you shouldn't see also you'll have absent of vessel marking peripheral to the line normally you see lung like this this is let's say this is your lung right lung and your x-ray you'll see those pleural lines very teeny teeny tiny like this absent in the periphery this part is not you're not gonna see anything it's just some lung tissue okay why not seeing this because there is air obscuring your vision doofus forgive my language Ascent of the epsilateral hemidiaphragm, yes, in spontaneous pneumothorax, the diaphragm is up. Let's talk about tension. The restrictal shift or mediastinal shift towards the normal side and away from the abnormal side. And there is descent of the hemidiaphragm. Let's talk about physical exam in pneumothorax. First, we start with inspection. Let's look at the patient. You might see a skin cut, especially if it's open or tension pneumothorax. Unequal breathing between the two lungs. So here is the patient. You put your hands like this right on the chest and the other hand like this you're trying to feel the right side and the left side of the lung and you look at the elevation ask the patient please breathe in and then the breathing is not equal on both sides that's where you try to suspect one of those lungs are not normal tachypnea yes sudden onset shortness of breath what's the normal breathing rate or respiratory rate it's 10 to 18. Please don't say 20, unlike your sophisticated physiology professor, because according to every pulmonologist, 20 is kind of tachypnic. Intercostal interactions, retractions, I'm sorry, because this is respiratory fatigue. When you have shorts of breath for a long time, <laughs> you'll get tired. And when you get tired, we see those intercostal retractions. The ribs and, or the space between the ribs is going inwards with breathing. Jugular venous distension, of course, you see it from the bedside, and we do it on that right jugular vein. This is going to be obvious in tension pneumothorax. Palpation. First, you palpate the tracheal shift. It's going to shift towards the affected side in spontaneous. It's going to shift towards the normal side in tension pneumothorax. You can see ankle edema in tension pneumothorax due to loss of the negative intrapleural pressure. Tactile vocal fremitus or TVF is decreased. Why? Okay, let me explain. Because there's something called pleura obscuring the ability of the lung to transmit the sound. TVF is when you put your hands, um, or like the edge of your hand, you do like this. Tick, 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 tick. And let's do it, put it on the chest of the pain. And hey, sir, please whisper or say 99, 99. Not whisper, just say 99, 99, 99. And then you try to feel it. Okay, it's usually decrease in tension and spontaneous pneumothorax because the pleura is obscuring the transmission of sound from your lung to your fingers or to the edge of your hand. Percussion. You'll find hyper resonance in both tension and spontaneous, especially in tension. And I don't like to see, say tympanetic because I reserve this for the stomach and for the abdominal exam. Auscultation, baby. Diminished or absent. Again, something is obscuring the lung field. Every morning I wake up grateful that I have nice followers like you. Please subscribe and join the tribe, hit the bell to get notifications and smash like. Follow me on Facebook, I have more than 100 cases there. And you can get my premium videos, my post notes, my cases, my audio notes and my PDFs. 
all organized in Dropbox folders, including the slides of this video, and you can download them and keep them for you forever at patreon.com slash metacosis. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Metacosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.